teaching this boy. That's verse 9. He says, I want you to go fight the Amalek. So they go out there and fight. And it came to pass when the old man Moses <clears throat> couldn't put his hands up anymore, and he let his hands drop, that the Amalek would start winning. But when he raised his hands back up, the Jews started winning. The Hebrews. Mm. So somebody that was smart, apparently it wasn't me, uh, said, you know what? Let's get the old man a chair, a rock. Let him sit down. You hold his hand. You hold his hand. Let's keep his hands up and let's just get this thing over with. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's just beat the Amaleks. Mm -hmm. Let's just destroy them. That is a picture of of the church being behind the pasture. You're holding your pasture up. I'm not going to embarrass you, so don't answer out loud, but did you pray for me that I would have something to give to you so that you might be able to use this week, this year, next year, the year after, amen? Did you pray for me, amen, and say, God, help my pasture? That's holding my hand. Got it? Amen. Yeah. If you ain't holding my hand, guess what? We're losing. <laughs> if you're holding my hand, what are we doing? We're winning. <laughs> Amen. Real simple. Real simple. Amen. Amen. You want this church and you want God all over you? Amen. And God to help you? Pick up the old man's hand. Amen. Amen. Pick him up in prayer. Get behind the preacher and hold his hands up because he's tired. Tell me this, amen. I mean, I'm going to be 58 this year, amen. I'm already tired. I woke up tired, amen. The day hadn't even got started, and I'm already tired, amen. Amen. <laughs> Sick and tired. Ain't that the phrase? Sick and tired. <laughs> <laughs> so they win. They win. Verse 15. Well, verse 14, they said, put it in the book. So they did. They put it in the book of uh, Exodus. Verse uh, 15, he built an altar. Verse 16, he said, For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with the Amalek from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. These people... What's my good English? Have really upset God mm. so much. Mm. He's gonna fight the children and the grandchildren and the great 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 grandchildren and the great 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 great, -great grandchildren. I mean, you have really made God mad when Amen. He's coming after you, your family, and anybody that you're associated with. I mean, he is going to war against you. Again, aren't you glad we're in the New Testament? <laughs> I like that part, love your enemies. Now, let me tell you about love your enemies. Love your enemies means I don't have to hang around you. I don't even have to like you. But I do have to love you. So that means I will pray for you. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of people like that. There's somebody like that in your life. Come on now. Be serious. Shake your head. Come on now. You know, there's somebody you hate. Come on now. Shake your head. Come on. Don't be a hypocrite in church. Amen. You know, there's somebody you don't like. Amen. What do you do? Post the love. Didn't say kill them. Said love. Old Testament, kill them. Sometimes I like the Old Testament. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, he said, this is going to be from generation to generation. Yeah, we ain't never going to quit. Mm -hmm. The Amaleks, some of them will survive. And then when they build back up, we go back out and we'll kill them again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let the babies grow up. Let them have a good time. And then we'll go kill them again. Amen. And we're going to keep doing that, and doing that, and doing that, and doing that, and doing that. Amen. Amen. I asked the question, how many times did you read your Bible? Amen. Till you finish it? No. Till you die. Right. 
You read your Bible, amen, from the beginning to the end, and then you read it again, 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 then you read it again. Why? It is manna from heaven. Amen. This is the bread that will give you life, the bread of life, living water. You need a drink? Get in the bar. You need something to eat? Get in the bar. Chapter 18, boy, we, we're really moving along now, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you. Jethro shows up. This is the priest of the Medians, the father-in-law. And the first thing he does, he brings his wife and their two sons and says, listen, I'm an old man, I'm, I'm grandpa, amen. This is your wife and your grandchildren, and I'm sick and tired of taking care of your wife and grandchildren. Amen. They're being a real blessing. Amen. But they need to go home. <laughs> Amen. That's what happens when you become grandpa. Amen. <laughs> we can keep them for a few hours. Amen. And say, oh, look how cute the baby is. Oh, baby poop. Here, Mom. <laughs> you didn't like that joke at all. <laughs> Amen. I can see that you did not like that one bit. Amen. <laughs> Child's crying. Oh, here, Mom. As long as they're playing, having fun, amen. Now, if I'm watching TV and I'm watching a good movie, amen, the kid keeps wanting to play with me, I'm going to go, Mom! Come get your kid! <laughs> you know you would, too. Come on down. Come on. Amen. So, Jethro comes over there, praises Moses, and says in verse 11, Now I know that the Lord, I hope you're reading your Bible, by the way, because I'm only hitting the highlights. You know, it's like watching the news. You know, the Astros get 30 seconds on the news. The Texans get a minute. All right? All right? That, that's just the way it is. The Dynamos, 30 seconds. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe 15 seconds. That's it. All right? So I'm just hitting highlights. All right? That's all I'm doing. Your job is to actually read your Bible. Read the stuff that I didn't preach on. Amen? Amen. So verse 11, we went from, uh, amen, to him bringing the uh, grandkids over. He says, I know the Lord is greater than all the gods. For in the thing wherein thou dwelt proudly, he was above them. Now, Jethro is the high priest, all right, of the Medians. All right, uh, he was the high priest. He now knows I'm worshiping the wrong God. You know what? Right here, verse 11, he got saved. Look at it again. Look at your Bible. Come on now. I only got a few minutes before I got to stop. Look at it. Did he get saved? He had been worshiping another God. He was a high priest. But now he knows that the God of Moses is the real God. And he gets born again. The little light bulb comes on and he goes... I think I've been doing things wrong. I've been doing things, amen, religiously all my life, trying to worship God, but I've been worshiping the wrong God. I think I'll get saved. Amen? And he admits it. It takes a heart, man. That's why the Bible says the road to heaven is straight and narrow. Few there be that find it. You know why? The few, the few are willing to admit I was wrong. Mm. My religion was wrong. My family was wrong. My friends were wrong. Everything that I have ever learned about God was wrong. Amen. There's only one way to heaven, and it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. This man has come to that point. He said, I've seen the miracles. He said, I've seen what God's done for you. I see you in charge of all these people. I've seen what God's done in your family. I've been worshiping.
worshiping the wrong God. Mm -hmm. And he gets born again. Mm -hmm. What does it take for a man to get born again? Number one, you got to admit, I'm a sinner. Number two, if you die today, you got to admit, I'm going to hell. Mm -hmm. Number three, you got to admit, I got to get to Jesus to get saved. Number four, you become honest and say, Lord, there's things in my life I really enjoy. There are a bunch of sins that I really like. I mean, I enjoy it. If I could have triple portions of those, I would really enjoy it. But I want to go to heaven. So Lord, would you please come in my heart? Come in my heart. Kill the old me so the new me can live. And when that happens, instantly, supernaturally, when you call on Jesus Christ and confess your sins, God supernaturally will save you. I mean right there and then. And then the things that you used to hate, all of a sudden now you love. And the things that you loved, now you hate. Mm -hmm. The worst person, the most miserable person, is a Christian faking that he's a Christian. Amen? He doesn't like coming to church. He doesn't like reading his Bible. He, amen? He don't want to live for God. 